Thousands of years before the events depicted in the A Song of Ice and Fire book series, Westeros was a land populated by fearsome giants and diminutive Stone Age children of the forest who wielded magic and had a deep connection to the natural world. These non-human races roamed the continent for many years until the first men entered Westeros through the Arm of Dorne, a southern land bridge leading to the eastern continent of Essos, located across a narrow stretch of sea. Although exact dates for such events cannot be known, Westerosi scholars of later ages estimated that the first migration of humans into the continent began around 12,000 years before conquest. BC before the conquest and AC after the conquest are the year notations used by these scholars who base it on the conquest of Aegon Targaryen, the warrior king who founded a powerful dynasty which united the continent under their rule. Returning to the Dawn Age as it was known, a popular story in the south claimed it was the great hero Garth Greenhand who originally led the first men into Westeros, settling a realm in the Reach where he became the ancestor of many noble houses, including House Gardner, while northern stories say it was the first king, possibly buried in the Great Barrow of Barrowton, who first led their people west. Whatever the case, the First Men introduced a new level of technology to the continent, wielding weapons and armor of bronze, riding horses, and using a runic writing system. As a result, they spread all the way into the north, slaughtering any children of the forest or giants who stood in their way. Going to war, legends say the children of the forest performed a magical ritual to shatter the Arm of Dorne land bridge, thereby cutting off further migration west, but by that point it was too late, as the first men already on the continent could not be defeated. Ending the war around 10,000 BC, the first men and children formed a peace pact where humans were given open lands while the natives took the deep woods. This peace also caused the first men to adopt the old gods of the children, deities associated with special weirwood trees, some of which served as heart trees with carved faces. Although peace meant the slaughter of children ended for a time, their population was greatly diminished, as was that of the giants who migrated into the far north to escape extinction, lessening in number until they were rarely seen. The first men, meanwhile, thrived after the war, establishing mighty kingdoms throughout the continent during a period called the Age of Heroes. It was during these years that many legendary figures from Westerosi history rose to prominence, like Lan the Clever, founder of House Lannister, a cunning trickster who swindled House Casserly into giving up their ancestral home of Casserly Rock, Durin God's Grief, founder of House Durandon, who built the mighty fortress Storm's End to endure terrible storm attacks from the Sea God and Goddess of the Wind in retaliation for marrying their daughter Elena. Then there was the Grey King who slew a sea dragon and ruled the Iron Islands, from which many of the ironborn noble houses descended, including House Greyjoy of Pike. Yet tragedy eventually struck in 8000 BC, when Westeros suffered a generation of darkness and invasion by the Others, or White Walkers, from the lands of Always Winter in the furthest reaches of the Far North. Although the people of Westeros were accustomed to long dark winters, as seasons in this world could last several years, the Long Night stood out for its unusual length, resulting in widespread famine and death. These conditions then worsened when the White Walkers invaded, strange, beautiful, elegant beings of ice, wielding powerful magic, allowing them to raise armies from fallen humans and animals, turning them into white, unrelenting undead slave soldiers, serving their masters without question. Although much damage was inflicted, legends claim it was the last hero who saved humanity by embarking upon a quest north in search of the elusive children of the forest. The last hero underwent this journey with a dragon steel sword, a horse, a dog, and a dozen companions, but lost them all along the way. Yet in the end, he found the children and convinced them to ally with the first men against the White Walkers. Learning whites could be killed with fire, while the others fell to obsidian and dragon steel, the first men rallied behind an organization called the Night's Watch and won a decisive victory in the battle for the dawn, pushing the others back into the lands of Always Winter. In order to prevent any such invasion in the future, the hero Bran the Builder, founder of House Stark, raised a massive wall in the north, aided by the Children of the Forest, who cast powerful spells upon the ice. The Night's Watch was then charged with protecting the south from all threats beyond the wall, including attacks from the First Men, who lived beyond the wall after its construction. These people developed their own clan-based culture over time, calling themselves Free Folk, while Southerners called them Wildlings, believing them savages and raiders. Emerging from a harrowing time in which the First Men struggled for survival, it was important to note that Westeros was not the only land facing crisis during the Long Night. Taking a step back for a wider view of the known world, many people in foreign lands told similar stories to those found in the Western continent. Across the narrow sea in Essos, stories of the Roinar people claimed a terrible darkness froze the River Roin until a hero emerged who united the children of the Goddess Mother to sing a secret song which brought back the day. 
traveling further east, the great empire of the Dawn, said to rule nearly all lands beyond the Bone Mountains, had their own legends, with the most prominent version stating the wicked deeds of the Bloodstone Emperor caused the Maiden Maid of Light to turn her back on the world. This led to an age of darkness when the Lion of Night came forth to punish the realms of men. As a result, demon armies invaded from the northeast, causing the Pearl Emperor to build five massive Blackstone fortresses for their defense. The devastation of these years only ended when a hero wielding the sword Lightbringer led the armies of men to victory against the forces of night, restoring light to the world. Though humanity was saved, the Great Empire of the Dawn did not survive, and so many of the realms that formed in the ensuing years adopted their own versions of the hero, naming him Hirkun the Hero, Nefarion, Yintar, and Eldritch Shadow Chaser, while the followers of the Red God Relore in the ancient city of Ashai called him Azor Ahai. The legend of Azor Ahai then went into further detail, claiming that to forge Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes, their savior labored for a hundred days and nights before driving the blade through his wife Nisa Nisa's heart, so her blood, soul, strength, and courage went into the steel. Using the sword to save humanity, prophecies foretold Azor Ahai would one day return, reborn to fight against a second darkness. Following the years of the Long Night, many of the ancient realms were lost, allowing new powers to emerge throughout the world, while others survived and rebuilt as best they could. South of Westeros, in the Summer Isles, an ebony-skinned people developed an enlightened culture that emphasized love and trade over hatred and warfare, while further east was Sothorios, a mysterious, resource-rich continent that many civilizations failed to colonize because of dangerous wildlife, deadly diseases, and large, hostile natives known as the Brindled Men, one of the many non-human races who shared this world, like the short, stocky Ebenese on the island of Ib, the nature-loving woodwalkers of Ifekevron, and the strange, violent, green-skinned people of the Thousand Islands. In the far east of Essos, the Golden Empire of Yi Ti was the largest and most prosperous of the successor states to the Great Empire of the Dawn, benefiting from the Jade Sea trade route, which brought ships from east and west to trade rare items for high prices. Other states and peoples of the region included the Patrimony of Hirkun, the nomadic Jogos Nai, and a number of far eastern realms so distant the scholars of Westeros know them only as lands of magic, monsters, and barbarous people, demonstrated in the mysterious city of Ashai, where the water glowed green at night, no children or animals could be found, and every manner of wickedness was permitted. Moving west beyond the Bone Mountains, Essos was populated with many realms until the rise of the Valyrian Freehold. Starting as simple sheep herders, the pale-skinned, silver-gold-haired, purple-eyed Valyrians found dragons living around the 14 Flames volcano chain on the Valyrian Peninsula, and over time became dragon riders capable of great magic. Among the many cultural traits they developed, the most notable was their tradition of marrying within their own families to keep the blood of the dragons strong. Expanding into a mighty empire, their enormous, flying, fire-breathing dragons proved an overwhelming advantage, forcing conquered survivors to flee or submit to Valyria. As they expanded westward, the Andal people of northern Essos first migrated to Andalos along the coast before sailing aboard ships to settle Westeros. Dated to between 6000 and 2000 BC, the Andals became the second major human cultural group to invade the continent, going to war with the First Men and nearly wiping out the remaining children of the forest. In addition to wielding weapons and armor of iron, having an elite class of warrior knights, and developing a superior writing system, the Andals were devout worshippers of the Seven, a single god with seven aspects, represented by the Father, Mother, Smith, Warrior, Maiden, Crone, and Stranger. Conquering all of Westeros south of the Neck, it was only the First Men of the North under House Stark that successfully defended their realm. Although the Andals spread the faith of the Seven to nearly every territory they controlled, they also married the defeated and adopted many of their traditions, most noticeably on the Iron Islands, where they converted to the faith of the Drowned God held by the local population. Around 700 years before conquest, the last major migration into Westeros occurred when Princess Nymeria led what remained of a 10,000-ship Rhoynar refugee fleet, escaping the Dragonlords of Valyria. After failing to settle other lands, Nymeria arrived in Dorne and married the Andal leader of House Martell, creating an alliance that conquered the territory, making Westeros a land of Andals, Rhoynar, and First Men. Across the Narrow Sea, the Valyrian Freehold thrived under the rule of 40 noble families until 114 BC, when the Targaryens withdrew from politics and moved their entire household to the faraway island of Dragonstone in the Narrow Sea. Anar Targaryen made this decision because his daughter Daenys the Dreamer had a vision foreseeing a great tragedy which struck 12 years later in 102 BC when the 14 Flames volcano chain erupted, shattering the peninsula. Following the Doom of Valyria, Essos descended into a century of blood, with former Valyrian territories struggling for survival. By the end of this period, the western coast was ruled by nine free cities, while the Dothraki Sea further east was held by nomadic horse lords which conquered nearly all nearby civilizations. 
one of the few to survive the Dothraki and prosper during these years, were the cities of Astapor, Yunkai, and Miring along Slaver's Bay, as they built their economy around the slave trade, thereby providing a place for the Dothraki to sell the prisoners they took in battle. On Dragonstone, the Targaryens, last of the Valyrian ruling families, became a major power in the Narrow Sea, controlling trade with the threat of Dragonfire until 2 BC, when Aegon Targaryen atop his dragon Balerion and his sister wives Visenya on Vhagar and Rhaenys on Meraxis invaded the continent. By this time, Westeros was divided into seven kingdoms, known as the Kingdom of the North, the Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale, the Kingdom of the Isles and Rivers, the Kingdom of the Rock, the Kingdom of the Reach, the Kingdom of the Storm and Dorne. Defeating nearly every kingdom, Aegon was crowned King of Westeros and forged the Iron Throne from the swords of his defeated enemies. In the north, they remained under House Stark, as did the Vale under House Arryn and the Westerlands under House Lannister, while House Hor of the Kingdom of Isles and Rivers was destroyed, with their territory split into the Iron Islands, ruled by House Greyjoy, the Riverlands ruled by House Tully, and the Crownlands ruled by the King from the capital of King's Landing. Further south, the Targaryens destroyed House Gardner and so left their reach under House Tyrell, while House Durandon was defeated in the Stormlands, but lived on through their successors, as the new lord of the territory, Ori's Baratheon, best friend and rumored half-brother of King Aegon, married the daughter of the fallen Durandon king, in addition to adopting their sigil and house words. Yet while these mighty realms fell, the mixed Rhoynar Andal population of Dorne resisted under House Martell, fighting a brutal guerrilla war over the first decade of Aegon's rule, ultimately ending with the Conqueror admitting defeat and signing a peace treaty. Over the next three centuries, House Targaryen ruled the continent of Westeros, with some of their kings acting as absolute monarchs through the overwhelming might of their dragons. Though these rulers varied in wisdom and aptitude for the position, one of the most notable of Aegon's descendants was King Jaehaerys the Conciliator, who ended two civil wars to preside over a golden age of peace and prosperity. Unfortunately, his descendants squandered these accomplishments, and the realm was torn apart in the dents of the Dragon Civil War, fought from 129 to 131 AC. A vicious conflict between the chosen heir, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and her younger brother Aegon, who claimed the crown against his father's wishes, but was backed by tradition and precedent, which favored male heirs. The conflict not only killed thousands, but also wiped out nearly all the dragons, leading to their eventual extinction and a significant loss in power and prestige for House Targaryen. Even so, the descendants of Illyria continued to rule for many years, with Darren the Good standing out as another exceptional king, able to bring Dorne into the realm through a marriage alliance and win a civil war against his half-brother Daemon Blackfire. For many of these years, Darren the Good was aided by his loyal half-brother Brynden Rivers, nicknamed Blood Raven, serving as Hand of the King, the second most powerful position in the realm, but he eventually ended up as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch until he disappeared during a ranging beyond the wall. Over the next few decades, House Targaryen continued to defend their throne against House Blackfire, but won all five wars until their enemies were seemingly destroyed, though in truth they survived through the female line. The last great Targaryen king to rule, Aegon V, had a fascinating life. As he was so far down the line of succession, no one expected him to take the throne, and so was allowed more freedom in his youth, serving as a squire to the hedge knight Sir Duncan the Tall. As a result of traveling across the continent and getting to know the small folk, he became their advocate as king, earning love from commoners and hatred from the nobility threatened by his reforms. Yet Aegon V's reign was cut short when he died in a failed attempt to hatch dragon eggs, causing a terrible fire which killed the king and many others. Yet while these notable kings performed great deeds worthy of praise, their dynasty ultimately met its end under Mad King Aerys II, a cruel, incompetent monarch whose son and heir, Rhaegar Targaryen, disappeared with Lyanna Stark, a daughter of House Stark betrothed to Lord Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands. Believing her kidnapped, House Baratheon of the Stormlands allied with House Stark of the North, House Aaron of the Vale, and House Tully of the Riverlands to fight a rebellion which defeated and deposed House Targaryen. After the death of Rhaegar in combat, and Ares II by his Kingsguard, Sir Jaime Lannister, Robert Baratheon was crowned King of Westeros, presiding over 15 years of relative peace through his personal ferocity as a warrior, in addition to the strength of his alliances. Unfortunately for the Starks, Lyanna died in Dorne, while the Targaryens were almost entirely wiped out, save for young Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen, the youngest children of the Mad King who escaped to Essos. Years of poverty and struggle turned Viserys into a foolish, impulsive young man, but he never gave up the goal of retaking the Iron Throne, finally finding an opportunity when his ally Illyrio Mopatis of Pentos arranged for his sister Daenerys to marry Khal Drogo, a powerful Dothraki horse lord they hoped would invade Westeros for the Targaryens. Meanwhile, in the far north of Westeros, White Walkers were spotted for the first time in thousands of years. It was at this point the A Song of Ice and Fire series began in 297 AC. 
After years of peace, the realm was torn apart when political scheming and greedy ambition led to the assassination of the Hand of the King, John Arryn, followed by the death of King Robert Baratheon and execution of Lord Eddard Stark, three longtime friends whose alliance maintained stability in the Seven Kingdoms. Yet now with all three gone, chaos erupted, allowing House Lannister of the Westerlands to take direct control over the Iron Throne through Joffrey Baratheon, the eldest son and heir of Robert Baratheon, and his wife Cersei Lannister, though in reality, all three of their children were fathered by Jaime Lannister, the Queen's twin brother and lover. As both Jon Arryn and Eddard Stark uncovered this secret before their deaths, word had spread, allowing for various claimants to rise, like King Stannis Baratheon, Robert's eldest living brother, and the Lord of Dragonstone, who by tradition was the one true heir to the Iron Throne. Yet their younger sibling Renly also put forth a claim, as he was backed by the Stormlands, which he ruled, and the Reach through his allies in House Tyrell. Seeing the realm divided and weak, the Iron Islands declared independence under King Balon Greyjoy, while King Robb Stark of the North and Riverlands declared independence as well, gathering armies to wage war against the Lannisters in retaliation for their execution of Robb's father, Eddard Stark. The Vale, meanwhile, remained neutral, as did Southern Dorne. Known as the War of the Five Kings, this conflict devastated Westeros and killed thousands during a time when the White Walker threat grew larger in the north, with the pleas and warnings of the Night's Watch largely ignored. In the east, Viserys Targaryen was killed, but his sister Daenerys proved shrewd and fearsome, undergoing a great journey in metamorphosis from the property of her brother to the Khaleesi wife of a great call. Yet it was only after the death of her husband that her destiny truly revealed itself when she accidentally performed a magic ritual allowing three dragon eggs to hatch, thereby becoming the mother of dragons. With Viserion, Rhaegal, and Drogon by her side, Daenerys made her way to Slaver's Bay, where she purchased an army of unsullied slave soldiers, eunuchs who drank an elixir which lessened pain and trained their whole lives for combat. Knowing what it was to be a slave, Daenerys liberated her army and asked them to fight as freedmen, launching a campaign to end slavery in the region, conquering Astapor, Yunkai, and Meereen, where she ruled as queen. Yet despite her best intentions, both Yunkai and Astapor rebelled and gathered a great alliance to wage war against Daenerys. Back in Westeros, as the war progressed, nearly every claimant king was killed, with Renly defeated by Stannis who took the Stormlands, while the Reach went to the Lannisters in the capital, though they also lost a king, when the volatile Joffrey Baratheon was assassinated, allowing for the succession of his younger brother Tommen. In the Iron Islands, Balon fell from a bridge, likely assassinated by his younger brother Euron Greyjoy, who succeeded as king before leading a fleet east to marry an ally with Daenerys Targaryen. Though King Robb Stark never lost a battle, he ultimately made political mistakes, which led to his assassination and betrayal by houses Frey and Bolton, which took power in the Riverlands and North under the Lannisters in the capital. With enemy kings falling and the power of House Lannister and Tyrell behind him, Tommen Baratheon had great potential as king. Yet after the murder of his grandfather Tywin Lannister and great-uncle Kevin Lannister, the young monarch lost his most cunning and wise advisors, greatly weakening his chance of bringing stability to the realm. King Stannis, meanwhile, initially won the Stormlands with the aid of the Red Priestess Melisandre, a sorceress follower of R'hllor from Ashai who believed Stannis was Azor Ahai reborn. Yet he steadily lost power until making the drastic decision to retreat with his army to the Northern Wall, where they aided the Night's Watch against a massive army of wildlings invading the south to escape the White Walkers. Establishing a foothold at the Wall, Stannis then embarked on a campaign to conquer the North and take Winterfell from House Bolton. By 300 AC and the end of Book 5 in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, the remaining kings vying for the Iron Throne also faced several outside powers threatening the realm, not only from Daenerys Targaryen and Slaver's Bay, but also young Aegon Targaryen, yet another possible candidate supported by Illyrio Mopatis of Pentos, the mercenary Golden Company, and the former Westerosi spymaster Varys, who claimed this young man was the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and his wife Elia Martell that was supposedly killed during Robert's Rebellion but was actually smuggled away to Essos. Another threat to the realm came from the brilliant strategist Peter Baelish, also known as Littlefinger, who orchestrated many of the most consequential events of the war in order to facilitate his own rise to power, marrying and then killing Lady Lysa Arryn so he could have direct influence over her son Lord Robert Arryn, thereby controlling the entire Vale while still possessing further plans to expand his power. Then there were two branches of House Martell in Dorne, who stayed out of the conflict thus far, while making their own plans in secret, with the Prince's faction seeking a marriage alliance with Daenerys Targaryen, while the Sand Snake nieces of the Prince wanted outright war against the Lannisters. Finally, there was Bran Stark, a younger child of Eddard Stark, who traveled north with a group of companions following prophetic dreams, until reaching the Cave of the Three-Eyed Crow, where some surviving children of the forest lived with Brynden Rivers, the brother of King Daron the Good, who survived the long years since his disappearance, and was now a decrepit old man whose body was intertwined with a weirwood tree. Yet he possessed great magical powers, teaching Bran green seeing and skin changing so he could see the past and present through the eyes of heart trees across the continent, as well as enter the minds of humans and animals. 
Bran was training to become the new Three-Eyed Crow, as there was a larger destiny he must fulfill. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Barachado, Average Soul the Healer, Sir Rick Lone, and Kyle Blitzsword. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.